All right, so let's move on to the next skill that we have, which is measure and record respirations. This is on page 37 of your skills book. So I'm gonna pull this up so we can look at it together. Again, if you've got the book, you can look at it in your book. We always start with a care plan, of course. Care plan says patient will be lying in bed for skill. Count the patient's respirations for one full minute and record your readings. So that means that we have to count for one minute. Yes, 15 seconds and multiply that by four to give us our full minute might be perfectly okay for everything else in the, in the world, but not for this patient. For whatever reason, we don't need to know why, for whatever reason, this patient requires a, a full minute count. Uh, it also says patients laying in bed for this skill. That makes this skill way easier, guys. If you've got somebody that's laying down, you can see their chest move up and down, their tummy move up and down as they breathe. It makes watching respiration so much easier. But there's something you can do to make it even easier. If you put an alcohol pad on their stomach while they're breathing, it will amplify what you see. And you're gonna see that in just a minute with the video. It actually makes it easier to see the respirations. And yes, you can do that for the state exam. Perfectly okay. Normal respirations are between 12 and 20. So down here, you can actually see right here, that is our normal range between 12 and 20. If you get anything outside that normal, you have to report it to the nurse. For the test, you can be off by two breaths in either direction. So if, if the nurse gets 16, if you get 14, 15, 16, 17, or 18, you're still considered accurate. So you can be off by two breaths in either direction. Charting is required for the skills, so they're gonna give you a documentation sheet. You need to make sure that you write it down. You're not gonna turn around to the uh, evaluator and say, I got 16, what did you get? You have to write it down and then the nurse will uh, compare it to what she got because she wrote hers down too. This is a live person skill, so you may be the patient in the bed for this. And somebody with your level of experience should be able to complete this in five minutes or less. So not a hard skill. Uh, one breath in and out counts as one. <sighs> Okay, in and out counts as one, but patients aren't gonna breathe that exaggerated for you. Breathing is usually easy, quiet, even, hard to hear, hard to see. So you've gotta pay close attention here. If your patient is noisy breathing like that, you need to let the nurse know right away. If you can see the breathing or hear the breathing really easy, that needs to be reported to the nurse. You're gonna have to work a little bit harder on this because breathing is, it's an automatic function. It's usually very uh, low key, okay? So you have to pay attention to this. You're also gonna have to time this. So you have to look at the clock, pick a starting point, and then you're going to say start out loud so the evaluators can count with you. Um, when you're um, counting the respirations, right? It goes up and down. It takes some time. <sighs> During that, you can actually glance at the clock to see where you're at, right? So, okay, I, I can glance at the clock and look back while they're still in that breath cycle. So this is easy to do the timing, but you can't stare at the clock because if you're staring at the clock, you're not looking at the respirations. But there's a couple problems with this, a couple serious problems with this skill. So I'm gonna come over here to the mannequin she doesn't work as good as a real person, right? Because she doesn't actually breathe. But this should give you kind of an idea of what I mean. So let's go over to the mannequin. So right now we've got this mannequin laying in bed. Now, if I were to come over to the mannequin, and let's say I've already done my opening, I've washed my hands, I've done all that, and I am ready to start counting, all right? Go. How comfortable do you think this person is with me standing over them, staring at their chest, not talking and not touching them? Not comfortable at all. That, this makes me look like a major creeper. Trust me. 
this patient is creeped out by me right now. You can't just stand over somebody and stare at them. It, it, it's going to alter their breathing patterns because now they're nervous. They, they don't know what you're doing. What are you up to? Why are you here? This is just weird. And because it'll make them anxious, anxiety increases respiratory rate, we're not going to get an accurate reading. So we can't just stand over somebody and stare at them to count their breathing. Now, the other thing is this takes like a minute. This is a long, remember how long a minute was on Monday? And it lasted forever. So you can't just stand over somebody and stare at them for a minute without talking. That's just like really weird. So you need to make this look like you're taking their pulse. I'm not actually going to take their pulse, but she's not going to know that. If I set it up right and it looks to the patient like I'm taking their pulse, it makes them way more comfortable. So let me show you what I mean. All right, Miss Jones, I'm going to take your vital signs now. And I'm just gonna hold your hand up here. This is gonna take me about a minute, but I'll let you know when I'm done, okay? Ready, go. So I've set this up where it looks like I'm taking the pulse. The patient thinks I'm taking the pulse because I have her wrist here. Her focus is here, not here. Because if you tell somebody that you're counting their respirations, if they know that you're counting their breathing, it will alter their breathing. They will actually breathe different. They will either speed up or they'll stop breathing it all together. You know, they'll hold their breath. So either way, we're not gonna get an accurate reading. So you can't tell them that they're counting their breathing. You can't make them aware that you're counting their breathing. So during the opening, we're not gonna say, I'm counting your breathing. We're going to say, I'm going to take your vital signs. And when you do that, when you, when you tell them that you're going to take their vital signs and you set it up for them to feel like you're taking their pulse, it gives you a much more accurate reading, okay? So remember, in and out counts as one. Use an alcohol pad on the tummy so that you can visualize the uh, breathing a little bit better. Um, I'm going to show you the video on this. And this video has different camera angles. And I did that on purpose. So you can kind of see how it's all set up. Um, so you're going to see different camera angles. But the problem is that because the camera angles change, it's kind of hard for you to keep track of the respirations with me because the camera angles do change. But do the best you can and see if you can count along. Remember, in and out counts as one. And at the end, see if you get close to what I got for um, the, the respirations, because at the end, I write the respirations down on the clipboard, see if it, it's within two breaths of what you got to see how accurate you are, okay? And remember, you won't have to count for a full minute for every single patient you take care of, only for those that are indicated in the care plan. Most of the time, you can count for 15 seconds, multiply that by four, and that gives you your reading over a minute. And that helps with time management. Because guys, you're going to have way more to do than your shift is going to allow you to do. So anytime that we can shave off a few seconds here or a few seconds there, it does help with overall time management.